Barcelona between the years of 2014 to 2017 gave us some of the best footballing moments of all time. They gave us MSN. Messi, Suarez, Neymar absolutely lit up the Champions League, La Liga and all competitions they played in. It got formed after Barcelona signed a young Brazilian winger in 2013-14 from Santos. And then the next season, they signed Luis Suarez from Liverpool for £80 million after he had just lit up the Premier League. And at that moment, we had formed MSN. They went on to win the second treble in Barcelona's history and become the first ever team to win two trebles. That night against Juventus was special and it really sealed MSN as one of the greatest trios ever to play football. So, in today's video, we have reunited the boys. MSN are up front for Barcelona once again. And we have one season to see how good can we make the team around them. Can we win them a treble and become three-time treble champions? Well, we're going to have to find out. But if you are new here, make sure to hit like, subscribe and comment down below. What other video would you like to see? But let's just get straight into this and check out what the team looks like with MSN sass up front. Neymar is in Barcelona gear once again. It's so good to see. He's got five-star skills, five-star weak foot still. His stats still look very good. He's not with a pace he used to. But he's still got 93 dribbling, 85 passing. He's only 31, so he shouldn't actually go down in ratings too much. Got loads of play styles, high medium. He still looks very, very good. And then we move on to Louis Suarez. He is only 83 rated and he hasn't got the pace. He never had loads and loads of pace, but he used to have more than 63. And he's not he's only got three star skills, four star weak foot. But it's still Luis Suarez. I don't care if he's a bit fat now. I don't care. It's Luis Suarez playing for Barcelona. He's gonna do a job for us. I guarantee you that. And then finally, we have potentially the GOAT of football, Lionel Messi back in a Barcelona kit. How often do Barcelona fans dream of this happening? 93 dribbling, 89 passing. Obviously, we saw him won the World Cup with Argentina. He's still got it when he wants to show up. But the question is, are them three going to show up this season? Let's have a look at the rest of the team that's going to go around them. And we can soon work out how many signings we're going to actually need. As you can see, the team looks like an absolute joke. Suarez is in. Neymar is in. And Messi is back to Barcelona. But the rest of the team... Is actually pretty good. We've got Gundogan and Pedri in midfield with De Jong holding. They are absolutely fantastic. We've still remember, we've got Gavi off the bench to be coming on as well. And the defence, we've got Raulho, Kunde, Cancelo and Christensen. We're not far off building potentially a treble worthy team. And we've got a lot of people to sell. We can sell Lewandowski. We can sell Ferran Torres. Players that would be involved if it wasn't. For the magic of MSN. So I think the first thing to do is instantly try and see how many players we can get rid of and free up some transfer budget ready for a very, very busy and exciting window. And the first player to go is actually Rafinha. I just don't think he's going to get many minutes with Messi on that right wing because we're going to try and play them. Even though they're old, we're going to try and play them in basically every single game. But he is actually going to Real Madrid. So he has become a rival instantly. But don't worry. We can beat Rafinha in the league, in the Champions League, all of that. But it's not just Rafinha. We've also managed to get rid of Lewandowski. He's going to Tottenham for about 45 mil. And Rafinha was about the same. So that's freed up 90 million already to spend. We'll check out how much they've given us. So this could be massive. We could be about to be spending loads on a couple superstars. And then we'll be ready to start the season. And would you look at that? We've got £250 million to spend. I thought Barcelona were meant to be broke. Clearly not. Let's now start scouting some players and I'll show you who I think could be possible signings. So to start with, we've scouted two centre-backs. You can see them both Premier League and two of the best that have ever played in the Premier League. It's Ruben Diaz and Virgil van Dijk. Remember, this is a one-season challenge. So that is actually swaying me a bit more to van Dijk. I trust him a bit more now. But... They are the same rating, so maybe it would be stupid not to go for the younger one. And just like that, we managed to sweet talk Jurgen Klopp. It was quite a bit of money, 70, 75 mil. But Van Dijk and Messi are meeting. And you know what that means? He is in the team, ready to go at centre-back alongside a Raulho. That's a disgusting centre-back partnership. And stuff is really starting to get exciting here at Barcelona. But I don't think we're done with business yet. 
Who else are we going to be scouting? And I think if we get one more midfielder, it could be a game changer. If Gundogan becomes a bench player for us and an impact sub, that could be the league secured already. So we've got three different styles of players. We've got De Bruyne, the centre mid that can also play the 10 role. And obviously it's De Bruyne, one of the best midfielders in the world over the last 10 years. It's common sense. Then we've got Musiala, a youngster that shows so much talent. Him and Pedri next to each other could be ridiculous. And my favourite shout so far, Rodri. Because do you know what happens if we sign him? De Jong pushes up. We have De Jong and Pedri and Rodri doing the Busquets role. That's his main comparison. People will say, who's better, Rodri or Busquets? It doesn't matter who's better. We can have Rodri link up with Messi, Suarez, Neymar, do the Busquets role. And I think for that reason, I'm going to have to try my best to sign Rodri. We couldn't actually get a deal done for Rodri, so instead, we went for his teammate. They wanted 150 mil for Rodri. On top of that, he wanted loads of wage, loads of signing on bonus, and we physically couldn't afford it. But I mean, De Bruyne is not a bad second choice to have at all, is he? I mean, there is the issue with the uh, potential fitness, but I don't actually care. Look at this team now. Need I say no more? Look at this team. It is an absolute joke. De Stegen in goal. Baller. Kunde at right back. Baller. Araujo van Dijk. Ballers. Cancelo. Baller. De Jong. Pedro De Bruyne. They're not even ballers. They're, they're a next level beyond that. And then. MSN. That is a special, special team. And I honestly don't think there's anything left to do. Other than get into the season. And see how we're doing. Come January. And just like that. We've made it to January. Let's have a look. How are we doing in the league? The Champions League? Any cups? And then it's time to check out how our MSN doing together. Are they putting up good numbers in the league? We are first by one point. It's us and Real Madrid running away from it. But look at them stats. Let's get a deeper look at this. 14 wins, 3 draws, 1 loss, scored almost 50 goals and only conceded 15. That goal difference is absolutely crazy what a start that has been we could be winning the league in the first season if we carry on at this rate let's also check the copa de espana i think that's the first round we're about to be involved in and we're about to play that so that one we haven't even been started in yet but this is the big one the champions league how are we doing we're in the round of 16 that's positive it's against man united could be tough but i reckon we should be able to get through that one relatively easy how do we do in the groups we went unbeaten. Of course, we did. Four wins, two draws in the Champions League. That means there's one thing left to do. How are MSN doing on stats? So Neymar in the league, 11 goals, 6 assists in 17 games. But in the Champions League, he's also put up a cheeky 3 goals in 4 games. Almost averaging an 8 rating. Luis Suarez in the league, 10 goals and 1 assist in 13. And in the Champions League... Two goals in three games. MSN haven't even been playing every Champions League game. And they're still putting up crazy numbers. And Lionel Messi, six goals, four assists in 13 league games. MSN are actually fully cooking. No wonder we're at the top of the league. And look at that, De Bruyne, six assists in 18 league games as well. All the boys are cooking. Now let's just wait and see at the end of the season... Have we managed to keep up the form and win the Champions League, the league? How successful are we going to be in this challenge? And we've made it to the end of the season. Look at some of the results in this month. A 6-1 win to Real Sociedad, but we did lose 3-2 to Bayern Munich, which I think means we got to the semis, but didn't quite make it to the final because we would have a fixture still to play. So we haven't won the treble, but have we won their league that's what we're all wanting to know let's go and check right now a couple clicks away from finding out yes by four points we only lost two games all season 30 wins six draws and two losses we scored 105 goals and only conceded 36 that's an unbelievable goal difference and we won the league with m s n have a look at that. 96 points is absolutely outrageous. But let's check the other competition. So, the Copa de España. We did not get to the final. We did not get to the semis. We lost on penalties in the quarterfinals. I guess that's not the end of the world. 
is not something we were proper striving for. But this is the Champions League. It's Bayern Munich v Inter. And we did lose to Bayern Munich 6-3 on aggregate in the semis. But who else did we beat? So, we beat Napoli 6-4 on aggregate. That's good. And Man United, we beat 10-4 on aggregate. Oh my god. That's a, that means we won 6-2 in the first game against them. What a run that was. And we just missed out in the semi-finals. I think the boys will be very happy with that. But let's check how we all individually did then. Let's go over to the stats. And the goals. Oh my god. Neymar, 24 goals, 11 assists in the league. And 5 goals, 2 assists in the Champions League. He averaged a 7.84. He's absolutely ridiculous. And now, Luis Suarez, 22 goals in 29 appearances. He's just as good. I told you he would cook, even though he's only 80 rated now. Something about MSN getting back together. And obviously the fact that he's got a super team behind him. Just meant he was always going to cook. Lionel Messi ended with 17 goals and 15 assists. That is such messy numbers. He's got 32 goal involvements in 29 games. That's absolutely ridiculous. De Bruyne ended with 7 and 8 in the league. It's not bad. Victor Roque off the bench got 9 goals in 12 games. Pedri, 5 and 5. De Jong, 4 and 9. All the players did their part. But it's all about MSN. Their goal tallies are just a ridiculous amount. So 17 goals, 22 goals, 24 goals. With 11 assists, 6 assists, 15 assists. That is flashbacks to prime MSN. But now, there's only one thing left to do. And it's sim until we get our well-deserved trophy parade. Have a look at this. I'll be quiet for a minute before the outro. But just take in this. MSN lifting the trophy one last time. And That is where we're going to leave, as you can see, Barcelona with the trophy right there. If you have enjoyed and made it this far, thank you very much. Drop a like, drop a subscription, turn on notifications, and make sure to comment down below what teams you want rebuilt next. But until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.